A few weeks ago, I asked a question on Twitter about the .NET Entity Framework CLI tools and an error I was getting. As it turned out, the error was due to a typo, no surprise there, and no one on Twitter noticed it either. But that's beside the point. Numerous people did, however, recommend the EF Core Power Tools Visual Studio extension, stating how awesome it is for reverse engineering databases. Only one problem. Visual Studio extensions only work on Windows. <laughs> has been open source and cross-platform since 2014, but still so many people shy away from .NET due to outdated beliefs that it's Windows only and that C-sharp engineers are predominantly boring middle-aged opposite of cool Windows only. And hey, no free IDE on Mac? What about Visual Studio Code? But yet again, I digress back to EF Core Power Tools. Last week, the creator of EF Core Power Tools, Eric EJ, EJ because I don't want to insult Eric by butchering his full name, tweeted about the brand new cross-platform EF Core Power Tools CLI, and I couldn't be more excited to give it a go. But first, let's start by looking at the Visual Studio extension. I've already installed it from the marketplace. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I'm going to reverse engineer or scaffold a database into an empty class library. Just right click on the project you wish to scaffold and click on EF Core Power Tools. Note all the stuff you can do here. Click on a reverse engineer. We need to add a database connection, so click on add. A new dialog opens and here you can add all your connection data. Once the connection is set up, click OK and then just choose the tables you wish to scaffold. Once that's done, you can click OK to continue to the next step. I like to call my DB context a DB context so I can update that here. I can also go into the advanced settings down here and get it to create my DB context in a different directory to my entities. It is so configurable and easy to use. I can see why people kept recommending the tool to me. Let's take a look at the generated code. It's created lovely clean entities just the way I like them, but if you prefer to use data annotations there is a checkbox to enable that. But the default is to have clean entities and to use Fluent API to configure the models. This is fantastic. It's also created this efpt.config.json file, which is a JSON representation of all the stuff we set in the GUI along with the tables we scaffolded in. Okay, so what about the CLI tool? Let's shift over to my MacBook to really test it out, but it will work on Windows and Linux too. To install the tooling, I just need to run this command. I've already installed it, as you can see. I have SQL Server running on Docker and a database ready to go, so let's scaffold it into this empty class library ready to have some entities generated for it. Wow, that was quick. The default command has scaffolded all the tables into the project. My DB context isn't named the way I like, and it's also lumped in with the entities. But you see this efcpt-config.json file here. I can update this to get everything set up how I like, just as I did with the GUI. Your IDE should also give you IntelliSense. Once I've set up the config file, I just need to run the command as before, and everything will also magically update. So that's a really quick look at this useful and importantly cross-platform tool. It's open source, so if you wish to contribute or even sponsor the project, then check out the links in the description box below. And don't forget to comment below with your thoughts on this tool, suggestions for other tools to try, and of course your questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.